this presentation about the binding and sliding of the CRISPR-Cas9 guide RNA complex. The CRISPR-Cas9 is an RNA-guided DNA endonuclease system which is widely applied for genome editing purposes. The Cas9 protein recognizes DNA motifs called PAM, which in the case of the widely used variant of Cas9 from Streptococcus pyogenes is an NGG motif. And uh, once it binds to, to this motif, it opens up uh, the DNA upstream from this uh, N, uh, N nucleotide. And uh, once this happens, uh, then uh, the guide, a guide RNA molecule uh, that is attached to the Cas9 protein uh, begins uh, probing the DNA for complementarity. And if the complementarity between the guide RNA and the DNA is sufficient, uh, then double strand breaks uh, are produced by Cas9 nuclease domains, uh, uh, three nucleotides upstream from the PAM. After cleavage, the DNA is repaired by error-prone mechanisms that introduce indels, and these indels are what we use to measure the efficiency of the Cas9 system. Um, there are two main challenges uh, with, the, uh, with the genome editing with the Cas9. The first one is that the binding between the guide RNA and the DNA tolerates mismatches, which means that we can have cleavage at, at off-target sites flanked by a PAM in the genome. And the second challenge is that the cleavage efficiency that we obtain when we use different guide RNAs can vary greatly because this cleavage efficiency mostly depends on the properties of the guide RNA that we're using. We, uh, we sometimes refer to it as guide RNA efficiency. We model Cas9 guide RNA bindings uh, using free energy changes. And uh, the model to apply for that includes three main uh, uh, energies. Uh, one is delta GH, which is the hybridization energy, so how well does the guide RNA and the DNA uh, hybridize together. And then there are two energy penalties, one for opening the DNA and one for unfolding the DNA, which could be folded into a secondary structure that needs to be opened up. And uh, the residual uh, binding energy is multiplied by a correction factor uh, that depends on the PAM, which is uh, just simply one in the case of uh, the energy G PAM. Uh, but for alternative PAMs like NGA and AG, this is a value lower than 1, because these PAMs are still tolerated but with lower frequency compared to NGG. And what we noticed when we compared uh, the binding energies uh, of uh, lowly efficient guide RNAs uh, here in red and the highly efficient guide RNAs, uh, which are in blue, we noticed uh, that the guide RNAs with high efficiency uh, end up in a more restricted uh, um, range of, uh, of binding energy values uh, compared to low efficient guide RNAs, which are first of all higher binding energy, hybridization energy, which means less stable binding, but also more spread it out. And interestingly, the affinity to this delta GH range can explain why off targets can be cleaved with higher efficiency compared to the on targets. So we have this in the example in, in, in the figure B. Uh, and we can see how off targets that bind uh, th that are cleaved with higher efficiency compared to the on targets uh, better fit uh, into into this uh, sweet spot uh, energy range of uh, delta uh, of hybridization energy values uh, compared uh, to on targets uh, while instead off targets that are cleaved uh, with uh, lower efficiency compared to the on targets are outside of this sweet spot energy range and inter interestingly we cannot get a similar uh, result uh, uh, using uh, the GC content uh, as, uh, as a criterion. It was shown uh, that uh, uh, Cas9 uh, can uh, find its targets not only by random uh, search, uh, the DNA, uh, but also by uh, lateral diffusion. And uh, because of this, we were interested in uh, seeing uh, how Cas9 and the guide RNAs will behave uh, when multiple uh, uh, possible PAM sites uh, are adjacent uh, uh, to each other uh, and adjacent to an on-target site. So let's say that we have uh, an on-target binding site that has uh, these uh, two uh, GGs uh, that are required for the NGG PAM, but is also flanked by other two Gs. So the NGG, in the case of the NGG, the, the N is a G, and there is also G downstream. So we try to model, come up with a model that de describes uh, how, how will Cas9, uh, uh, how do we expect Cas9 to behave in these situations. And let's say that Cas9 binds to an upstream uh, GG PAM motif. Uh, then 
the, uh, the, the guide RNA could still bind to the DNA by forming an RNA bulge. But from this conformation, we do expect uh, Cas9 to slide uh, on the DNA to match uh, the on-target PAM uh, such that uh, the, the RNA bulge is resolved, uh, binds to the DNA, and we increase the complementarity and therefore the stability of the guide RNA DNA binding. Instead, uh, when Cas9 uh, binds to a downstream PAM, we don't expect this sliding to happen, at least not with the same, with the same rate. Why? Because uh, the, uh, when Cas9 binds to a downstream PAM, then the guide RNA can bind to the DNA fully, and th there will be a DNA bulge, but still the, all of the bases of the, of the guide RNA are still occupied uh, to bind to the DNA. And therefore, we don't have, uh, let's say, an, an energy benefit uh, in, uh, well, we don't have a complementarity benefit in, uh, in uh, uh, sliding upstream, at least not the same benefit that we have in the case of the sliding downstream. So what we think is that in this case, uh, the guide RNA will uh, uh, sit at this position, so the, the Cas9 complex will not, uh, um, will not dissociate from the DNA because uh, the complementarity between the guide RNA and the DNA is too high, but at the same time may not produce a, a cleavage, or at least not, uh, uh, not efficiently, uh, and at the same time also prevents uh, other Cas9 complexes from binding. And when we looked at the data, we, uh, we got a confirmation uh, from, from this, uh, because uh, uh, as you can see here, uh, the guide RNAs that have a downstream PAM, which are the red ones here, have a much lower indel frequency, which is our way of measuring Cas9 cleavage, uh, compared to those guide RNAs that did not have any opportunity uh, to, to bind at an adjacent PAM. Well, instead, the guide RNAs that have an upstream uh, PAM, uh, sorry, guide RNAs that target sites that have an upstream PAM have a higher efficiency compared to those that don't have an upstream PAM at the target. And when we introduced uh, uh, this, uh, um, the, the possibility to bind at upstream or downstream uh, local, uh, uh, local off-target sites uh, in uh, the definition of uh, CRISPR uh, specificity. So the, the CRISPR specificity reflects uh, the ability to bind at the on-target site uh, considering all of the off-target sites in the genome. Now, if we consider these additional binding opportunities as local off-targets and we integrate them into the model that, that evaluates the CRISPR specificity, we get a better correlation between the specificity and the, the, uh, the efficiency, which is here in the plot, compared to not, uh, not including these uh, local sites. Then we looked at uh, how the possibility of sliding on the DNA impacts uh, the PAM compatibility. So on this plot here, for different uh, PAM binding sites, we show their, uh, uh, their efficiency. Uh, well, the efficiency of the, gui of the guide RNAs at acting at target sites uh, that with these PAMs. And we can see, of course, how the uh, GG uh, binding site uh, has higher efficiency, followed by uh, AG and the GA, while all of the other um, PAM binding sites have a very, very low efficiency. But we then observed that whenever there is a G upstream, so if, if we only have one G at the target site, but then we have a G upstream and therefore we have a canonical binding site upstream with the formation of a bulge in the guide RNA, then we have higher efficiency compared to not having, uh, not having a G upstream. And uh, uh, similarly, when we have uh, only one G at the second position of the PAM and then we have a G downstream, then we can have uh, a binding uh, uh, one nucleotide, let's say, after uh, with uh, the presence of a DNA bulge, but this uh, has higher efficiency compared to not having uh, uh, the target PAM. So, in conclusion, we have shown how uh, highly efficient uh, uh, guide RNAs uh, fall in a restricted range of hybridization free energy changes, which exclude uh, extremely weak and extremely strong uh, guide RNA DNA bindings. We define this uh, restricted range as a sweet spot, and we show that the affinity to this uh, sweet spot can explain uh, why uh, off-targets can be cleaved more efficiently uh, than the on-target, and in general can distinguish uh, uh, the cleavage efficiency at, uh, uh, at the targets uh, and, uh, and off-targets.
then we showed uh, that uh, uh, how the PAM uh, contexts, uh, so the, the, the nucleotides that are adjacent to a certain PAM influence uh, the cleavage efficiency and specificity of the Cas9 system. And uh, we have shown that the presence of uh, binding sites uh, adjacent to, uh, to a target site uh, allow Cas9 to slide on the DNA and that this, uh, uh, at the end, uh, broadens the, the PAM compatibility of Cas9. Thank you for listening and have a good day.